Hello viewers, this is Hound Dog with you again in another historical aircraft from the past 100 years of U.S. Navy carrier aviation. Today is 15 September 1950 and we are flying the North American HA-2 Savage on board the USS Shanker Lodge. Check one two three three two one. Radio check. On 13 August 1945, one day before the formal surrender of Japan, the U.S. Navy began a design competition for a carrier-based medium bomber capable of a 10,000-pound payload. North American Aviation was selected with their proposal for an H.A. Savage, a large mixed propulsion aircraft with two radio piston engines and wingless cells and a turbojet in the rear fuselage. Now that the war was over, the United Armed Forces were shifting their attention to the new Cold War and the Navy decided that it needed the capability to deliver atomic bombs with aircraft deployed on carriers. Several months after selecting North American, the Navy issued a change to the HA's design to accommodate the latest Mark IV nuclear bomb. The North American Savage was the largest carrier aircraft at the time, with a maximum weight over 50,000 pounds. It was 63 feet long and almost 21 feet high, with a wingspan of more than 71 feet. The HA had tricycle landing gear with two wheels on each main mount that folded backwards into the engine nacelles on the high-mounted wings. Each wingtip had a 508-gallon fixed tank, and the outer wing panels and vertical tail fin could be manually folded by the ground crew using a portable hydraulic pump. The HA Savage was powered by two 2400 horsepower Pratt & Whitney R2800 turbocharged air-cooled radial engines in the wing-mounted engine nacelles and driving large four-bladed propellers. A 4,600-pound thrust Allison-built General Electric J-33 turbojet was mounted in the rear fuselage. The jet engine burned the same av gas that fed the radials and was intended to be used only during takeoffs and for high-speed delivery over the target. The air intake for the jet engine was located just ahead of the vertical tail and was covered by a door that opened during operation. The Savage was capable of a maximum speed of 471 miles per hour with a range over 1,700 miles and a service ceiling over 40,000 feet. There was a large internal bomb bay capable of carrying a 7,600 pound Mark 15 nuclear weapon or 6,600 pound conventional bombs. The Savage carried no defensive armament, relying instead on the surprise of the high speed low level initial approach and a high speed escape. The Navy approved North American's final design for the AJ Savage and a contract for three AJ-1 prototypes was awarded on 24 June 1946. The work on the prototypes proceeded as planned, but in September 1947 the U.S. Air Force was established as a separate armed service and immediately got involved in an inter-service rivalry with the U.S. Navy over maintaining a nuclear deterrent in the Cold War. The U.S. Air Force believed that it was their sole responsibility using their B-29, B-50, and B-36 long-range bombers. On 6 October 1947, the Navy ordered 12 production AJs and 28 more in May of 1948. In 1948, Secretary of Defense James V. Forrestal gave the U.S. Air Force primary responsibility for delivering nuclear weapons but also authorized the Navy to continue with the development of its own nuclear strike force. Test pilot Bob Chilton flew the first Savage prototype on 3 July 1948. At about the same time, the U.S. Navy also began an interim program to use the Lockheed P-2 Neptune as its first carrier-launched nuclear bomber until the Savage was in service. This plan called for the Neptune to be loaded on board the carriers in port and then later launched using JTO assist. The Neptunes could not land on the existing carriers and would either ditch at sea after its mission or land at a friendly airbase. 
Two of the three HA prototypes crashed during testing, one with wing failure and the second losing the entire tail. However, their loss did not materially affect the development of the aircraft. The first production aircraft flew in May 1949 and Fleet Composite Squadron 5 became the first squadron to receive a Savage in September 1949. The squadron participated in testing and evaluating the aircraft together with the Naval Air Test Center in order to expedite the Savage's introduction into the fleet. The first carrier takeoff was from the USS Coral Sea on 21 April 1950, and the first landing was on 31 August 1950. Pilots liked the speed and surprising maneuverability of the Savage, but it was unreliable and extremely difficult to move around the carrier. The manual wing folding procedure was slow and created problems and delays with recovery and handling of other aircraft. The congestion created on the carriers was often mitigated by requiring the savages to be the first to launch and the last to recover. They were typically parked on the flight deck to avoid the obvious problems on the hangar deck. A photo reconnaissance version of the Savage, the AJ-2P, was ordered on 18 August 1950. The nose of the aircraft was remodeled with a prominent chin to accommodate a forward-looking oblique camera and a variety of oblique and vertical cameras were fitted in the bomb bay. In 1954, the sole surviving AJ prototype was modified to conduct in-flight refueling tests using the probe and drogue configuration. The tests were successful and active aircraft had their bomb bay doors modified to accommodate the new hose and drogue and to begin refueling aircraft by late 1954. AJ-2s were replaced by Douglas A3D Sky Warriors from 1959 through January 1960. In 1962, all surviving AJ-1 and AJ-2 aircraft became A2As and A2Bs under the new Tri-Service Aircraft Designation System. North American produced 140 AJ Savage aircraft plus three prototypes. Some of the surviving Savages were modified in the early 1960s for use as civilian firefighter bombers. The turbojets were removed and the Bombay carried 2,000 gallons of fire retardant. The first missions were flown during the 1961 fire season. We should also note that in 1948, the Navy awarded another contract to North American for two prototype A2J Super Savage aircraft. Originally intended to be a simple upgraded turboprop powered version of the AJ Savage, the Super Savage eventually evolved into a significantly larger aircraft weighing over 61,000 pounds. It was doomed almost from the beginning, primarily due to the ill-fated Allison XP-40 turboprop engine program that had also killed the A2D Sky Shark program and the introduction of the new higher performance A3D Sky Warrior.